<laughs> Guess what happened to me? Uh, I hang on. I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> that was not blatantly obvious. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I got uh, something in the mail from uh, a listener of mine from another show who is awesome. Um, and he hooked me up. He got me a Nintendo Switch. What? Yeah. Now, now let me clarify that. He didn't buy it for me, but he had the hookup. Because those things are pretty pretty hard to come by right now. I don't know if you know this or not. I I do know this because I myself tried to find one, and uh, after performing several illicit acts, <laughs> I'm still without a Nintendo Switch. It's uh they're they're, they're difficult to come by. They are difficult to come by. But I I don't want to ask too many questions. You understand? Like it was like oh he had one, it had never been opened. He had two of them and, and he was going to hook me up. And so I paid him, you know, retail price. And then, uh, uh, he covered half the shipping, which he did not have to do. I thought that was wonderful. Yeah. Um, he, and, very nice. yeah, it also came with the, uh, the, the new legends of Zelda game, which and I hear is amazing. I got to tell you, I have never been a legends of Zelda guy, but I immediately jumped into this thing. And I, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever really fully appreciated the kind of, um, uh, what is it like? Uh, like Morrowind, not Morrowind. Baldur's Gate. What's the what's that one game? Dragon Age of something or another. Dragon Age. Well, you're like a dragonborn something or another, and you walk around in a world that's like really massive. It's oh, Skyrim. Skyrim. That's the one. So it's, I like. It's pronounced Scrim, actually. I've never really gotten into the scrims uh, that are out there, and like the, I. Well, what I'm saying is that like I, I've I've created the character, and then I jump in and. I don't really understand the context and there, I, there doesn't seem to be a story. And I never really felt immersed for whatever reason, because I know that game is like huge, but mm. this one, this legends of Zelda game, I don't know what it is, but immediately I just resonated with the fact that like, I'm just in this to go and explore stuff and I'm going to pick an apple and I'm going to read everything there is about this apple. Like, I don't know what it is, but something about I, the I, medium. I, first off, I want to stop you there. Uh, why do you keep calling it legends of Zelda? Are you thinking about legends of tomorrow? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, <laughs> What's it really called? Uh, it, it's called The Legend of Zelda something, something, <laughs> something, something. <laughs> something when something. Uh, yes, I probably still do have Legends of Tomorrow since I'd spent an entire day not getting any work done and just griping about my frustrations with this Legends of Tomorrow finale on Twitter. <laughs> I really did, man. That Legends of Tomorrow uh, finale was... I know y'all are about to talk about it on Legends TV Talk. Be sure to check out Legends TV Talk this week, but... Like, are you, are you going to be guesting on Legends this week? Well, I was if I was going to make you late, but it doesn't look like I'm going to make you late. So I don't feel guilty about it. So I'm going to keep drinking my little drinky drinky right here. And I'm going to go play some Legends of Zelda. And yes, Bell, I called it that even though now I know that's the wrong name. <laughs> that's how I the name down. Now I'm now. What is, Nintendo Switch Zelda. I think you're right. I think it's game. The Legend of Zelda. Well, uh, I know it's The Legend of Zelda, but I, I mean... It's something about wind. I know wind is in the name of it. Uh, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. That's it. Oh my gosh. Have you seen the Destiny trailer? Wait, like, the did de- they actually come out with a trailer? Or are we talking about the one, the the little... Uh, well, without- okay, all right. There's no, there's no gameplay trailer out for Destiny 2, but there have been two teaser trailers. I've seen the one with Cade. Uh, where he's in the bar talking to the dude and oh, he that's blows up. Hilarious. Yeah. Yes. And we, then I've seen the other one where it's the Titan guy and Cade and yeah. they're giving Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was so good. I yeah. gotta tell you, man. All right. So Destiny came out. You got it for Xbox. I got it for PlayStation. I played with um who did I play with? I, I played with a couple of our listeners, uh SpongeBobbies. Uh I nice. heard from SpongeBobbies in a while. I need to hit him up and see what's going on. But uh, but yeah, so I played played with a couple of our listeners a couple of times, but they were all super high level, and so they got into like raids and stuff that I couldn't get into. But I just had such a hard time with Destiny, man, because I couldn't get like there was no story to really immerse me in. It's like they created a universe but forgot to make a story, and so they just kind of threw you at it, and it didn't well, feel right for me. I mean, there's you know, there's story. There, there there's a setting, right? And so you have the setting and then inside that setting is where you go and you explore the story. Right. Well, see, I would argue that a setting is a component of a story, not the story itself. Uh, Yes, but there's still a linear progressive story that happens. Uh, But all right. So but but lacking. Well, I I agree with you, though. I, I, I yes, it's not like a traditional game where like, you know, Halo 
right? Where you go and you play Halo and, and, and you and you have a story. Yeah. Yes, you're, you're correct. But there is a story to this game. Yeah, they, they just didn't, didn't tell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just, they just didn't do the best job of telling it. Like, there's right. a lot of lore. There's a lot of lore. Oh, and I got no that. Story. Like, that's the thing. Like, you know, little Dinklebots like telling you like constantly over and over again about all these that creatures. Wizards from the moon. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> here's the title of this something of something, something that something is something of something, something of something. And it's on the moon. You know, like, like, it's just going to like, yeah. wait, do you want to explain any of that to me? No. Okay. Just go blow it up. All right. That's what I'm here to do anyway. So fine. So that's the thing. I could never really get into it. And actually, I think that was kind of part of this whole wave of games that launched without any kind of story, like really good story. Like you had, um, what was it? Was Titanfall? Uh, that was a thing, right? Titanfall. Yeah, it, it was the same, a similar kind of thing where, you know, there was no single player campaign. It was all multiplayer, except for there was a single player campaign kind of, but it didn't matter what happened. So like if you, cause it, they're basically like missions, you play the missions and you get to unlock this stuff. Right. But, uh, there's a little narration that happens you play the mission and then regardless of whether or not you win or lose, you play the next mission and the next narration is the same. Okay. All right. Well, so, so fair enough. So very similar. Well, sorry, there. Not, not, not the same. It's, but like if you're the, if you're the, cause you play it on, on both sides, right? You get the good guys in the, in the, well, they're both quote good guys. You have the government and then the, the resistance forces. Got it. And so you play through the government side, you get one Mac, you play through the resistance force, you get one Mac, but like, it doesn't matter if you're on the resistance force and you lose all the matches. The story plays out the exact same way. Okay. So like, that's the thing. So there's a kind of a lackluster quote unquote story element, if you even call it that. And then you also have battlefront two that launched with that or not battlefront two, but just battlefront. Then the newest edition of that franchise, which also launched without any campaign whatsoever, as well as overwatch. And of all those games, I would argue overwatch has been the massive success in terms of, letting the characters be the story. Like, see, that's, I, that, in my opinion, that's, that works sort of, I, I would prefer a story one way or the other, but letting the characters be the story as opposed to the universe works because it allows me to connect with either the character that I'm playing or the other characters around me. Destiny failed at that. Now with these new trailers, teasers, or whatever you want to call them, I'm, I'm starting to get behind destiny too, man. I'm, I might be willing to get, give this franchise another chance. Yeah, well, that's kind of what they did with uh, 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 Overwatch, right? Because they would release these little full motion video, right. you know, animated shorts of these characters to give you their story. So, yeah, the game is you go and you play Overwatch. But the story is all this extra material kind of outside the game, which is kind of what Destiny did, except for they didn't do it as well as Blizzard did with, uh, uh, with Overwatch. Like, a a at least the characters weren't as... In Destiny, there wasn't as much, I don't know, it wasn't as interesting, it wasn't as compelling, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, well, and there was there was something iconic about, you know, all of the characters kind of blended together, I think, in Destiny, whereas obviously there's unique, iconic natures to all of these different characters in uh, Overwatch. But uh, but one way or the other, you know, I was actually, I was watching these trailers the other day, and I was like, why? what is it? Why do I instantly get, get all of this? Why do I resonate with it? And then I realized, whoever composed these trailers... Uh, watched Deadpool and was like, hey, let's turn that into a trailer for Destiny 2. Because think about it. You got Cade, robot, you know, Nick Fillion. Nick, Nick Fillion? What's his name? Nathan Fillion. Yeah, 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 that guy. You have him as Deadpool right over here. Like, imagine everything he's saying and just Deadpool saying it, and it's like the exact same as you would imagine it. Then you got the Titan dude, who is essentially Colossus. And then you got the warlock lady who's essentially Negasonic Teenage Warhead with the whole that was inspiring. You know what I mean? <laughs> like their characterizations yeah. are essentially the primary three heroes of the quote unquote Deadpool movie or quote unquote heroes of the Deadpool movie. But but what about um, uh, Dopender? Mm, uh, he's the he's the he's the broom, the guy that was sweeping in the bar. <laughs> 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 Mr. Pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Dopender. Exactly. So I'm telling you, whoever like whoever designed these trailers and wrote these trailers was like, let's turn Deadpool into a trailer for Destiny 2. That that'll get everybody on board with the fact that all of their stuff is destroyed. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah. I I, I get actually, you know, I, I kind of don't get why they were doing that. Uh because with with you know most MMOs, you release the new game and everybody has to get back up to level cap. You don't have to re-roll your character. So that's kind of a new thing. The way they did it was kind of interesting, right? Oh, yeah, the city got destroyed. Now, I wonder if that was something they were planning on doing to begin with 
or what? Because it seems to me kind of like we didn't get Destiny 1 out the gate how we wanted it. So reboot mode and they yeah. smash the, the, the Citadel and the, or the tower and all that kind of stuff uh, to kind of reboot. So all I can say is I'm, I'm all for it, man. And I mean, in all, in all fairness, like literally they did this for me. Right. I'm, <laughs> I'm the guy that gave Destiny one a, a chance and was disappointed because I never got connected with any characters. I never got connected to a story. And so I left. And so I never really accumulated all that many. Like I didn't get attached to any items or anything because I didn't really accumulate anything. I, I beat the quote unquote campaign and then I was pretty much out because I had no desire to grind anything. And I really like got like I almost fell asleep during some of the cutscenes the quote unquote cutscenes in that game. So yeah. they right now are trying to appeal to me, the person that bought destiny was disappointed and they want to get my money back. And I'm inclined to give them my money back. That's what I'm saying, man. This has been a pretty good marketing campaign here. Yeah. You know, I really liked the original destiny. I put a lot of hours into it. I know you uh, did. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I did most all of the high end rating. Uh, I kind of tapered off on, uh, the last expansion, but I did, uh, the vault of glass. Uh, I did, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, the taking King. Yes. And I didn't do the wolf one. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's the thing you Xbox, your Xbox, like all day, every day, all the way. Right. Uh, I mean, that that's what I have. Yeah. So when destiny two comes out, a, are you going to get it? Yeah, I think I'm going to get it. Okay, B, are you going to get it for Xbox? I mean, that's what I have. Yeah. So, yes. Okay, the, so... The thing is, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the PlayStation controller. No, I'm with you. Know. I'm with you. It's it's uh, it's grown on me a little bit, but I hear you. There's something about the Xbox controller that it, it can kind of take take a beating. Well, and my hands are... I, I, I can't ever, like, my, my you know, pinky is always just unsupported. Like, I can hold the Xbox controller in my hands... But with the the little stubby PlayStation controllers, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Dude, don't get a Switch. <laughs> you would not it, be. It's so tiny. Oh, I want a Switch though. I want. Don't tell me that. No, here's the thing. I love it. Like it's great for me, especially because like, so so you know after after DC Universe Online came to Xbox, I would bust that out and play it, and my daughter, my my four year old, would really want to play it as well, and so I'd hand her that giant Xbox controller, and of course she can't. Like her little fingers doesn't like doesn't work with that. Xbox huge. Yeah, but see that's the thing. Like the Nintendo Switch, one of the reasons I wanted it was because you know for one thing, Nintendo games are a little bit geared towards a younger audience. I mean, not not necessarily geared towards kids, but but definitely kind of a um, all ages audience. I'll say, and uh, and the controller is literally like perfect for her hand size. But if you've got like big hands, oof, I would hate to um, I'd hate to try to navigate that. Well, you know, I, I played a Switch at uh, uh, PAX South, and I played the handheld mode, and it was okay. Uh, but I was standing up, so mm. I didn't really get a uh, you know a feel for like you know sitting down or whatever. Uh, and it, it didn't feel too terrible, but I really did like the Pro Controller. Yeah. The, the oh little, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Pro Controller was solid. Like it was like I, the the ergonomics was great on it. It looked cool. Uh, the the button layout was wonderful. Uh, but I, I haven't played the little Joy-Con controller attachment, so I don't know if if, if that's going to. Okay, wait. Be... Is the Joy-Con is that the one where there are two separate controllers, one in each hand? Yeah, the Joy Cons are the two separate controllers, one in each hand. All right, so that's interesting. Like I, I when I first set mine up, that's what I did. Like I had that that pretty much that that is the setup, and it was actually after I put in not Ocarina of Time, Legends of Tomorrow, Zelda. <laughs> uh, when, when, when I put in Zelda tomorrow, it, uh, that's when I actually switched out to the one where you click in the controllers into the more traditional style controller. So I guess that would okay, be the so pro. No, 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 no. That's the, um, I don't remember what it's called, but that's, that's just like the, the, the controller shell thing. Yeah. Like you snap your joy cons into that. That, the that pro, feels, I think you would like that. Like that okay. feels very much like a controller. Um, it, it's kind of almost like this blending between the two of like a like a PlayStation and an Xbox controller. I'll say this, man. I was going to hold off on getting a Switch until they were more readily available uh, because I wanted to wait and see what the Pokemon game that was going to be announced was. But yeah. because I played it at the Nintendo booth at South by Southwest, like I remember leaving that booth sick, thinking, yes, I am absolutely going to get this. And I want this for my birthday. If I can find it beforehand, it's going to happen. And so I'm... I, 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 you know, a lot of times with, with gaming systems, I'll buy them and have this kind of almost like slight buyer's remorse. 
Uh, yeah. Not this time. At really? All. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm all for it. And like, I only have two games for it. Cause I've got the, you know, tomorrow legends of Zelda and link, uh, of legends and I've got that game. <laughs> and then I've also got the Bomberman game, which is good. Cause I can, you know, the whole family can play that one. Yeah. But, Bomberman. That's a fun game too. But Mario Kart's coming out in like a couple of weeks here. So I'm looking at getting that. And then, you know, I mean, I know a Pokemon game is coming. Like that's, that's the thing. I know it's coming. I just, I'm curious as to what it'll be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for shenanigans. Consider this a little, a uh, little something to kind of hold you over uh, as we, uh, prepare for the uh, weeks to come, the, the dry spell that is no episodes of The Flash. But uh, hey, head over to panel to screen. We've got a episode of uh, uh, reviewing Iron Fist coming your way once Bell finally uh, catches up on the episodes he hasn't watched yet. I'm trying. I just finished episode eight tonight. It's just, it's just like I'm not, now. This isn't this isn't a criticism of Iron Fist. I'm just saying I try to watch like at least two episodes and I'm falling asleep through yeah. the second episode. But that's yeah. just because it's, it's late at night. I'm not saying anything about the show. I'm just getting tired, and I can't watch as many as I normally can because I'm an old man, and yeah. Get it so together, Bell. Get it together. You can make it out. <laughs> but anyway, look for that on panel to scream. Got Arrow TV Talk Season 2 coming your way as well. Uh, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for being a patron. Good night, everybody.